The federal government's major aged care election promise, well, it's unravelling. Anthony Albanese pledged to have nurses around the clock in the facilities by July 1. But the sector is warning there's no hope of achieving that target. Wesley Mission has already announced plans to shut three homes, affecting 200 residents, including 88-year-old Adele Hibbert, who sold her home to move into Wesley's Narrabeen facility in Sydney. Now, she's saying that everyone is so upset, people have been in tears, and it's just awful. Joining me now is Kylie Ward, the Australian College of Nursing's Chief Executive. Kylie, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Most importantly, the human side of this, it's really heartbreaking. Yeah, it certainly is, Erin. Uh, and I think for nurses, nurses want to deliver really high standards of care. This is a this is really important that we get a registered nurse on every shift. It's a great initiative. We just need time to attract the workforce. Ali, it's a brilliant initiative, and anything we can do to improve the industry benefits us all, or it will eventually. How much were you consulted, though? Because even a year ago, I would envisage that you would have known that you could not have gotten that amount of staff. We have been, the Australian College of Nursing has been asking uh, and put out a position statement several years ago, wanting a registered nurse on every shift. So, and, and we gave evidence in the Royal Commission. We worked with a, a task force around aged care before that. So the, this isn't anything new in terms of what we're championing for. And we were very pleased to see that uh, this was a promise that was made for an incoming government. Uh, where we need a little bit of time, the, uh, the aged care industry and the aged care sector has been struggling for some time. And so what we now need to do is make sure that we can get a nurse on every shift. There's already a shortage of nurses in the country. In fact, there's a global nursing workforce shortage. Uh, we don't want to see beds closed or people displaced because... Uh, because of timelines that we're working really hard to meet. So are we looking at having to train a whole new group or are these nurses potentially that have quit during the pandemic, say, or because things were too tough that you can convince to come back? What kind of timeline do you need to be able to deliver on that promise? Look, I've been saying for several years now, Erin, that this has been a, a decade plus, pro you know, th this has taken years uh, to get to where we are. And it's not going to be recoverable uh, within days, weeks or months. But the intention to do so is really important and to see, uh, to see a registered nurse on every shift. But we're in a, we're in a crisis and, and you've actually said it. It's not one simple solution. We've seen experienced nurses leave the profession, new graduates after a couple of years. COVID's been tough on everybody. The aged care sector was hit very hard. Uh, the evidence that was given in the Royal Commission was alarming. But even in the aged care industry, 70% of all workers uh, were at a third tier or a certificate three level. And so that left only uh, not quite around 30% would be registered and enrolled uh, mm. in that mix. So if we're now looking at putting a nurse on every shift, uh, we need thousands more nurses. And the Royal Commission suggested 10,000 nurses we need to develop them, attract them, retain them and uh, invest in keeping them. We're not just a number and that will take time. What about pay? Is there any difference between what nurses are paid in, say, aged care compared with, say, an emergency department at a big hospital? Yeah, there certainly is. I'm not sure if, uh, if a lot of people realise this, but even though it's no different in our requirements that we're registered and we're licensed, but the aged care sector and primary care often get paid a lot less than working mm. in a hospital. So if you're in a regional or rural community uh, and you're competing, I mean, nurses deserve to be paid at the highest level for what they do and to be undervalued and underpaid continues to be an issue. So the nurses that work in that sector should absolutely, you know, they do a remarkable job and it's not mm. motivated on money, but to attract more of a workforce, we're going to need to pay them properly. No, nope, could not agree with you more. Kylie Ward, Australian College of Nursing Chief Executive, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Pleasure.